Hello, welcome to our introductory lecture on using Excel Solver uh, to solve linear programming problems. Last time we looked at our first linear programming model, which was a decision problem faced by a farmer. It goes like this. Let's say we have a farmer that owns some land and the farmer can plant one of two things wheat or corn so let me write that down here wheat and corn now this farmer has three resources one of them is the land itself another one is labor which can be thought of as hours of labor available to harvest the crops and finally the third resource would be some fertilizer all right so each acre that we plant with wheat will of course consume one acre of our land and each acre that we plant with corn will consume one acre of our land and let's say we have 45 acres of land available. Similarly, uh, we were given last time that each acre planted with wheat will require three hours of labor and each acre planted with corn will require two hours of labor and we have a hundred hours of labor available. Finally, we need two tons of fertilizer for every acre planted with wheat and four tons of fertilizer for every acre planted with corn and we possess 120 tons of fertilizer let's say sitting in our warehouse now when the crops are harvested we can sell them and it is um, told us that each acre planted with wheat will yield a profit of two hundred dollars and each acre planted with corn will give us a profit of three hundred dollars our goal of course is to maximize profit and our decisions are how many acres to plant with wheat and how many acres of out of our 45 to plant with corn so this is the data for the problem um, this is a rough description of what the problem is. We last time uh, wrote down a linear programming model for this, which is the mathematical formulation of what this optimization problem is. So the goal for today is to show you how to take that model and put it in Excel so that we can use Excel Solver to find the optimal solution. So I'm assuming that um, you have the mathematical model in front of you. If you don't, uh, pause for a second, go there and grab it. So how are we going to solve this in Excel? Well, first of all, we have to type the data in and we have done that. So what we have to do next is to tell Excel that this is an optimization problem and we have to type in the formulas associated with it. So here's an interesting thing. For every variable of your optimization problem, you'll have to have one cell in Excel. So let me open some room here for these. So I'm going to insert a line over here. And I'm going to reserve the cell B2 to be our wheat variable and the cell C2 to be our corn variable. And I like to uh, paint them a different color so that I know uh, where my variables are. So let me paint them um, gray. Okay, so those are the cells for our two variables. Now, for every constraint of the model, and in this one we'll have three constraints, we will need three cells. One cell to store the formula that is on the left-hand side of the sense of the constraint one cell to store the sense itself that is that symbol that tells you whether the constraint is less than or equal to equal to or greater than or equal to and finally a third cell to store 
the expression or number that is on the right hand side of that since. Well we have those right hand side numbers over here already so let us introduce two more columns to open um, room for us to add those two things and um, it painted these gray I don't want them gray so let me just remove that color from there good so if you remember correctly all of our constraints will be of the form less than or equal to the reason being that the formula for example over here will represent in English total number of acres that we use and that number should be less than or equal to how many acres we have which is 45 similarly the formula that we're going to type in here is going to represent the total amount of hours of labor that we use and of course that has to be less than or equal to how many we have and finally the total uh, tons of fertilizer that we use has to be less than or equal to how many we have. So what formula should we type here? From your model you recall that this should be W or the wheat variable plus the corn variable because that will give you the total um, acres that you use. Well the wheat variable is here plus the corn variable. So that formula is doing W plus C. Okay. Now similarly the formula that should go in here should be three times the wheat variable plus two times the corn variable. We could do that in many ways. We could do it like this three times the wheat plus two times the corn. Well this has an, a disadvantage uh, because let's say we later on want to change these numbers three and two to something else we have to come back in the formula and fix it. So perhaps a better way to do this would be to refer to the cell where the numbers three and two are so we could click here and say th three times wheat plus the next variable is going to be C4, that's where the 2 is, times the corn variable. Okay, that will give us that expression. And finally, if we do the same, we can do this times the wheat plus the other number, which is in C5, times the corn variable. That's good. Well, and of course, the profit, we can do that too. It's, it follows a similar pattern. Uh, the profit you will get is going to be $200 for each acre you plant with wheat, so 200 times the wheat variable, plus $300, which is in C6, times how many acres you plant with corn, and that is in C2. Okay? Now, you might have noticed that we did a lot of typing here. So imagine you had a lot more constraints and or a lot more variables you would waste a lot of time typing and all of the